Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about emphysema. Firstly going to the definition. Before discussing the definition, let's see the conducting zone and the respiratory zone of the lung. The conducting zone comprises of trachea, the primary, the secondary bronchus and further the respiratory zone is distal to the terminal bronchioles that is it comprises of respiratory bronchioles and the alveolus that is the alveolar ducts and the alveolar sac. Now the emphysema only involves the respiratory zone that is where the exchange of the gases takes place. So what is emphysema? It is permanent and abnormal enlargement of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles and this occurs with the destruction of the alveolar septa but there is little or no fibrosis. This is the definition going to the types of the emphysema. The emphysema, the types are divided according to the anatomic distribution within the labule, the acinus and there are four major types. There is centriacinar, there is panacinar, there is paraceptal and there is irregular. Now we will discuss firstly about the normal acinus. So normal acinus, uh, it is distal to the terminal bronchiole and it comprises of the respiratory bronchiole, the alveolar duct and the alveolar sac. And the types of the emphysema are divided according to the part of the normal acinus which is involved. Like in case of centriacinus, we can set centriacinus which is the most common type of emphysema. We can see only the respiratory bronchiole or the proximal part is involved and the distal part is spared. Okay. Now going to the types of the emphysema. Firstly, the centri acina, this is the most common type, and here the central or the proximal part of the acina is involved, whereas the distal alveoli is spared. And therefore, both the emphysimators and the normal air space will exist within the same acinus or the labule. And it is most severe in case of the upper lobes of the lung and the apical segments, and it is more predominantly seen in heavy smokers. We will understand about the pathogenesis later on how the smoking causes emphysema. Now going to the second type that is the panacinar or panlobular type. Here we can see as the name suggests the whole of the acinus is involved. The acinus is uniformly enlarged from the level of the respiratory bronchiole to the terminal blind alveoli. So here the pan uh, prefix it refers to the entire acinus and not the entire lung and the pan acinar form uh, in contrast to the centri acinar is most common in the lower zone and is more severe at the basis of the lung also this type of emphysema is associated with alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency this we will also discuss in the pathogenesis now going to the third type that is the distal acinar or paraceptal now here we can see as the name suggests only the distal part of the acinus is involved however the proximal part of the acinus it is normal also it is the second name that is the paraceptal therefore it uh, occurs adjacent to septa like pleura uh, along the connective tissue septa along the margins of the labules and also sometimes adjacent to areas of fibrosis scarring or atelectasis this type of emphysema, it leads to many cases of spontaneous pneumothorax because it occurs adjacent to the pleura. Lastly, the type is irregular emphysema. And as the name suggests, here the acinus, it is irregularly involved and is mostly associated with the scarring. This type of emphysema is mostly asymptomatic and, and is clinically insignificant. So insignificant that it is the most common post mortem finding. Now going to the pathogenesis and in the pathogenesis firstly we will discuss about the alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency and then we will discuss the effect of smoking. Going to the firstly the protease antiprotease imbalance. So there is an enzyme known as alpha 1 antitrypsin. So the alpha 1 antitrypsin enzyme it is a antiprotease and there is a protease antiprotease imbalance which leads to emphysema. So in genetic deficiency of patients with alpha 1 antitrypsin there is increased chances of developing 
emphysema. What is alpha-1 antitrypsin? Firstly, it is an antiprotease. It is a major inhibitor of proteases like elastase which is secreted by neutrophils during inflammation. So it inhibits the elastase and therefore it protects the normal elastic tissue to get damaged. And it is normally present in the serum, tissue fluids and the macrophages. Now going to the some bit of the genetic part of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Now alpha-1 antitrypsin enzyme, it is encoded by PI locus that is proteinase inhibitor locus present on the chromosome number 14. And this locus, it is very polymorphic. That means it has many alleles. And most common allele is the normal one that is M allele, which leads to normal production of the alpha-1 antitrypsin. But there are alleles like Z allele, which leads to markedly decreased level of alpha-1 antitrypsin. Now what happens is, when alpha-1 antitrypsin, it is decreased. Now normally, if there is any stimulus, there is any infection, which will lead to increased number of leukocytes in the lung. Therefore, if there are increase in the neutrophils, there will be increase in the uh, protease containing granules. Therefore, there will be increase in the proteolytic activity. There will be increase in the elastase. This will lead to uh, destruction of the elastic tissue if there are if there is low level of alpha one antitrypsin. If there is normal level of alpha one antitrypsin, it will inhibit that elastase enzyme, and therefore no emphysema will take place. Now, going to the role of the smoking along with the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So here we can see um, due to smoking, firstly there is production, there is nicotine. Nicotine is directly damaging to the tissues. Secondly, there is production of reactive oxygen species, the free radicals. These also lead to direct tissue damage. Now nicotine and along with production of some interleukins and TNF, this leads to increase in transcription factors in the body which leads to increase in recruitment of the neutrophils. Now the neutrophils they increase due to increase of transcription factors like NF kappa B. Uh, the neutrophil levels this is increasing. Now the neutrophils will lead to production of neutrophil elastase the protease enzymes like elastase. Now the elastase if it is not uh, inhibited, it will lead to the tissue damage. Now, the elastase can be uh, increased in cases in which there is congenital alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency as we already discussed. Secondly, there is something known as functional alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency which takes place in cases of smoking in which the free radicals they inactivate the antiproteases leading to a functional deficiency, not a de genetic deficiency. However, the elastase enzyme goes uninhibited and it will lead to the tissue damage and further destruction of the alveolar septa and the emphysema. And this is the pathogenesis. Now going to the morphology in case of emphysema. Firstly, the gross morphology. It will lead uh, in mild cases there will be no difference. But in cases of advanced emphysema, there will be voluminous lungs and so voluminous that they can overlap the heart and they can hide it when the interior chest wall we will remove during postpartum uh, postmortem findings. Also, sometimes large apical blebs or bullae can be seen. Most uh, findings are microscopic. Now, in microscopic findings, what we will find is you will find abnormally large alveoli which are separated by thin septa or no septa and there will be only focal fibrosis or no fibrosis. The inflammatory cells, they can be increased, they can be increased in the neutrophils, in the macrophages, in the lymphocytes. Then there will be loss of attachment of the alveoli to the outer wall of small airways. Then there is something known as pore of cone which are very large. We will discuss what is pore of cone. We will see. So, pore of cone is the interalveolar uh, space. We can see this is the pore, it is the interalveolar conducting channel. This is this will be enlarged. And lastly, we can see in the morphology, this is the normal morphology. Here the alveolar septa are intact. However, here we can find there is uh, disruption and destruction of the alveolar septa. 
this was all about emphysema do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like this video thank you for watching this video